Wagwan, Wagwan, Wagwan. Welcome, everybody. Hello, guys. Okay, saying YouTube is not supporting on private chats. Okay, this shows private. Why is this showing private? <clears throat> okay. So little technical difficulties here. I'm gonna exit, come back in and make this not private. Okay, so the comments are still not showing. Hmm. I can see the comments on YouTube, but not here in the stream. Hmm. Okay, let's see. How is this set up on YouTube? Maybe it's set up as private on YouTube. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, struggle streaming already, as TLA would say. Struggle streaming. So let's see. <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a great Friday today. Gonna have a pretty good show. Okay, so this shows as public. So I'm not sure why the chat is not showing. Hmm, okay. Aha, finally figured it out, it's public. Okay, there we go. Struggle streaming already, that's the problem with live TV. Okay, let's just see if this works now. Hi guys, aha, the business. Finally got the chat going. Thanks for your patience, guys. We had technical difficulties. And since I'm a one man studio, you had nobody to help me, okay. <laughs> so, Wagwan, big up, big up, big up. So, who do we have here so far? Big up to Skincare Do's and Don'ts, Igwe's daughter. Shout outs to XYZ. I guess this is somebody that's kind of anonymous. Hopefully, you're not a troll, XYZ. Hello, Ashley. Shout out to Ashley. Locked and Cyber, shout out to him. Shout out to the positive therapist as well. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. Okay. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of the show, you know, and any other show ideas you'd like me to cover. Now, imagine a weight loss drug, right? That you can use, take once a week, 
tiny little injection, subcutaneous, you know, just in one of those little fat areas in your body, pinprick, right? And it's covered most likely by insurance or could be covered by insurance, I should say. And at the end of the year, you've lost 15% of your body weight. Sounds too good to be true, right? 15%, that is a huge number, humongous number. I know some of you think it's not that big, right? But trust me, it's a huge number. Imagine you're five foot nine guy, right? 200 pounds. You lose 15% at the end of the year. That's 30 pounds. You go from 200 down to 170. You're going to look drastically different. But I know everybody's a very visual person. So, you know what? Let me do like share screen and show you what I mean through the power of pictures. Hopefully, we'll not have any technical difficulties again. Share screen. <clears throat> Particular window. I know we're doing the entire screen. Struggle streaming again. The browser can't access your screen. Try capturing a different screen to see if this continues. Wow. Constant struggle streaming. Okay. Let's try something different. Where there's a will, there's a way. Let's see if we can bring this up this way. No, that's not gonna work. Actually, this can work. <clears throat> It's not going to look as high definition as the version of this picture I downloaded, but it can work. Okay, so let's try this. Back to StreamYard. <clears throat> let's try to share yet again. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah, these pictures will make everything pretty clear. Share a tab. A window. Oh, I might actually be able to show the real picture. Aha! Man, today is a day of technical difficulties. All right, but we're still going. So, <clears throat> if you are the 200 pound guy, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Let me know if you can't see the screen. You know, sometimes the YouTube is delayed. Let me know in the comments if you can see the screen. <laughs> no, you cannot see the screen. Okay. Hmm. That is weird. StreamYard is sharing a window. Darn. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so let me show the, try this. Can you guys see this screen now? It's just a browser tab. Hopefully you can see that. I see a spinning wheel, but nothing. Man, struggle streaming already. Hmm. Okay, so we'll not be able to show you those pictures. That is clear. But essentially, <clears throat> if you're like BMI 30, because I'm looking at the pictures, right? Picture a pretty overweight guy. Technically, you're obese. If you lose 15% of your body, you're going to like shift one body size down. So if you're fat, you're going to go to chubby. If you're chubby, you're going to go to normal size person, let's say. Same for the ladies, right? It's that dramatic. You're going to move from several dress sizes down at the end of a year. And again, it's just this tiny injection, right? Luckily, when I actually do some clip of this, the edit can actually put the real pictures in there. But anyway, you guys are going to have to use your imagination. Use your imagination, right? Just imagine going down a couple inches on your waist if you're a guy or a couple dress sizes down if you're a lady at the end of the year, right? So... That is huge. 
And how does this thing work, right? Basically, it's triggering parts of your brain using a natural hormone that you have in your brain to help reduce appetite. So essentially, you'll stop eating as much as you are eating. Now, this is particularly helpful for those of you who have cravings, sugar cravings, or you just go crazy on food, or maybe you don't go crazy, but the, your food choices are not that great, right? So it can be super helpful there. Think of it as a stepping stone to better eating habits. Now, imagine if you actually eat better and or go to the gym. It can even be more a dramatic shift, right? It can get on even more than 15%, even more. Because, I mean, I know it's hard for many people to lose, right? I struggled for years with this, yo-yoing up and down. So I get the struggle. And this drug, Wegovi, that's the name. I know, Wegovi, it's a funny name. <laughs> it's the first weight loss drug approved since 2014. That's almost eight years, right? Long time ago. And uh, if you have a BMI of over 30, which, again, basically you're obese or you're fat, or if it's a little below that, but you have some problem related to your weight, like it's diabetes, sleep apnea, something like you can also get it, right? So how effective is this thing? I mentioned 15%. So these are not bogus mumbo jumbo studies, legitimate studies, because several publications I found called it a game changer drug. Now that's a not a term a lot of doctors throw around. I found several videos on this as well, and it really does seem to be a game changer drug. So the study had 1,961 adults who weighed an, on average 232 pounds. Obviously, they're very big people, right? After 68 weeks, which is over a year, they had lost 15% of their body weight. And they kept it off. They maintained it off for like two years. So that's pretty significant. They didn't just lose it and oh, it immediately came back or something, right? So while the placebo group only lost six pounds, so the group taking the drug lost 35 pounds. The placebo group lost six pounds. Again, dramatic difference there, right? And it's a pretty big study. So people also experience some improvements in blood pressure. What else? Cholesterol, blood sugar. Even though the drug isn't officially for those purposes, this particular drug, right? But that kind of makes sense, right? If you're losing that much weight, I would expect certain bodily functions to improve. That's, that kind of goes hand in hand together, right? And the question now is, is this thing too good to be true, right? Is there a catch there? Is it too good to be true? Well, nothing is perfect, and this drug is not perfect, right? So people who stopped taking the drug, they did regain the weight. Now, this kind of implies that, could you be on this drug for life? Right. But as I said earlier, if this is a stepping stone, you've lost the weight, you've made some lifestyle changes, eating habit wise is going out, then perhaps even if you came off the drug, you could maintain. Right. It depends. But it's definitely not a silver bullet. Right. It's not magic. It's definitely not magic. We haven't gotten to that level yet. So if long term, you know, if you're focused in a more comprehensive manner, let's say, on eating well, being more active, it doesn't have to be going to a gym, walking, playing some sport you like, um, doing some kind of physical activity you like, hiking, walking around, etc. You're much more likely to keep it off, right? Now, how much does this drug cost? It's not cheap. Without insurance, it's like up to 2000 a month. I know. <laughs> Most people can't. That's more than a mortgage, right? Uh, with insurance, it's like the copy of $25. So obviously, this is the kind of thing you're going to do if it's covered by your insurance. And how hard it is to get. Currently, due to COVID-19 production delays, it's actually pretty hard to get. Um, they expect it will be enough volume will be there in the second half of 2022, which again, sort of, you can read into that that this thing is pretty effective. Hence, it's running out of stock, for lack of a better word. Um, and as far as side effects go, some people had stomach issues, nothing too major, though 10% around that, I believe, quit the program because of side effects. You know, it could be nausea, diarrhea, stuff like that. Uh, no debts or anything like that, <laughs> thankfully. And that is kind of it in a nutshell for this drug. So it is groundbreaking. It's definitely a game changer, but it's not perfect, right? It's not perfect. So 
Let me go back to the comments here, see what you guys have been saying <laughs> about this. All right. And yes, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So let's see, what do we got going on? Yeah, this is a good comment. Waiting for the other proverbial shoe to drop. <laughs> Well, I think I touched on that. There are some risks and it is not a magical panacea. It's not going to, because even in the study, right, people were advised to reduce their calories and be more active. Granted, the drug by default, by curbing your appetite, is going to make you reduce your calories. I mean, that's how it works, right? Uh, and the good thing is it's using a natural hormone that already occurs in your body, right? It's not, uh, it's not using something that's not natural to your body. There's this hormone in the body called GLP-1, and it's using this hormone to help suppress your appetite. It's a good comment there by Igwe's daughter. Thanks for that, Igwe's daughter. Let's see, we got another comment here. Skincare do's and don'ts. Do you think those who regained the weight did so because their appetite increased because it was suppressed for so long? That is a good question. A very good question. Shout out to that. They did not say, but what they theorized was if you have this thing artificially suppressing your appetite and suddenly you've removed it and you didn't address the root cause of your eating habits, which is, you know, do you have a healthy relationship with food, right? Like I eat ice cream cake sandwiches, but I'm not eating them every day. Right. I can control myself. And when I don't, I just put them in the garbage. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, if you have an unhealthy relationship with food and you remove this thing that is restricting your appetite, then, yeah, there's a chance you're going to go back to your old self. Whatever that was for you, whether you ate too much or the foods you ate were just so calorically bad for you and you were perhaps inactive, then, yeah, you're going to gain the weight back. Right. It's almost like the people who do weight loss surgery. If they don't change their lifestyle, they're going to put the weight back on. We've done this in previous shows, whether it's The Biggest Loser or people doing weight loss surgery, the results are the same. If you don't make a lifestyle change, you're going to put the weight back on again. doesn't matter whether it's a drug, surgery. If I stop exercising and eating, I'm going to get fat again. It is what it is. Good question. Let's see. The Positive Therapist... There are many drugs in the drug class, but only we has been approved for weight loss. Yes, that's a good point. That's a very good point. So at some point, they're theorizing that, especially with the obesity problem, right, the obesity epidemic, I think I saw something where it says um, a third, the number of states in the U.S. since 2018 with a third of the population that's at least obese, that's doubled. And globally, there's an obesity crisis, right? So eventually, they're saying perhaps this may become less uh, as an optional thing. It may become more standardized, you know, be identified as a disease, let's say. So it would always be covered by insurance. I mean, it's a very complicated subject, right? It's not just the physical, it's the emotional, the mental as well. So D.I. Grifter, if it works as described, it sounds good once you also put in the work. Yes. As I always say, good point. It's not enough. These things can help you. What I like about this drug is it's a stepping stone to better behavior, right? If you use this time that you're using this year, you're losing weight, you're feeling physically better, your body's improving, you're mentally you're improving, you're feeling better about yourself. If you use this as an opportunity to start to eat better, start to become more active, then even if you stop taking the drug, most likely you'll maintain, right? Or you'll keep going, let's say. Good point there. By the way, if you guys want to come backstage, I can for sure bring you up as well. Let me put out the link join backstage don't be shy I won't bite here is the link
Well, let's see if I got some brave people tonight who want to get on stage. <laughs> I know I'm getting some great comments. So let's see if we can get anybody backstage. And I've never brought any on stage, anybody on stage yet. So I'm itching to try that out. Let's see if we have more technical difficulties or not, as the case may be. Ah, we got a super chat here. That deserves the horn. <laughs> Skincare do's and don'ts. Since you're a weight loss coach, would you advise clients who are overweight or obese to use during the course of you training them? That's a very good question. I would say based on initial interviews with a person, if the person, if it's not just physical. So let's say the person only has a physical issue, right, regarding losing weight then I'd rather start without the drug because there are side effects. You know, I saw some videos, uh, cramping, nausea, diarrhea, things of that nature. Nothing that made most of the people stop using it because they were getting results, right? But if we could just change from diet and working out and not use a drug, I think that would be more optimal, right? Now, if the person is having other issues going on, maybe they're super stressed or they're really, really big because when somebody is really big, they can have... Uh, some issues with going out in public to work out. You know, they may feel embarrassed, right? They may not feel they can work out. They may need to do a stress test with a doctor to be cleared to even work out, right? So baby steps sometimes is just enough. I mean, let's say somebody wants to start running. This may sound silly, but they could just put their running shoes at the door. And that's progress. The next time they put on the shoes, they're still not running, right? Or they want to go to the gym. They pack their bag. They don't go to the gym, but it's still progress. They drive to the gym. Don't get out of the car. Drive back home. Still progress. Yeah, I remember a trainer telling me some one time where someone was doing a very simple exercise. And I'm like, ah, that's not effective. And he was like, yeah, but this person just getting this person just to get into the gym was a success. So it's all relative. It's a long story. That's probably a long answer to your question, but I'd rather start without it. Now, if they need some help, Right. And granted, I'm not a doctor, so they'd have to get a doctor to prescribe this. Right. And if a doctor prescribed this, then, yeah. It would definitely help them. And especially if you view this thing to me as training wheels, we all rode a bicycle. Most of us at some point in time, you had training wheels. Right. Eventually, you took the training wheels off. That's the way I look at this thing, because I wouldn't want to be on this for the rest of my life. Right. To artificially suppress my appetite. At some point, I would hope I could get off of it. Because that's the goal of most medication, not to be for the rest of your life. You want to be able to get off of this stuff, right? Whatever it may be. Very good question. Let's see. Igwe's daughter, when you said that it was hormone injection, remind me about the fat of HCG injections. Watched your video on that, so now I know the difference. Yes, that's a very good point. The HCG diet definitely is gimmicky, nonsensical, total, total nonsense. Highly do not recommend that one. Do not do the HCG diet. I did a video on that. You know, I, I should put a link to that in this video since they're kind of along the same lines. HCG, do not do the HCG diet. It's just a starvation diet using HCG as a, almost like a damn placebo garbage. Very good point, Igwe's daughter. Thanks for that. Posting this back again for backstage. Oh, I just noticed we have somebody backstage. D.I. Grifta is backstage. Nice. I did not get an alert. I thought this thing was supposed to make some kind of a sound or something. My speakers are on. Hmm. More technical difficulties, I would say. Okay. So let's see. How do we do this? Add to the stream. <clears throat> Aha! So we have my first live guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you. No technical difficulties, D, with your skull and bones face. Okay. So you're a bit camera shy. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> so di grifto what 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 do you think what do you think about this product yeah boy it sounds like something out of science fiction yeah <laughs> if uh, it's too bad you have to be really obese to use it but yeah it sounds very promising yes it, it definitely does it definitely does sound very promising you know, I just got an idea. I'm going to try this again. Because I remember it said Chrome tab. So let me see something here. It is very promising. Yeah, to be honest, I thought this thing, when I saw Game Changer, I'd saw, seen it a couple weeks ago, but I thought, yeah, it's probably nonsense. Ooh. But I saw another article about it, and I clicked in it, actually, because this, this nurse said she didn't think it would work. And then... Like, wait a second, this sounds like it could be good because even she acknowledged it had good stuff. So I did more research and I was like, wow, this actually seems to be not nonsense. I was pretty surprised by that. So, okay, so let me try the sharing again. If you do on a Chrome tab, it will make it work. Chrome tab, select tab. Okay, can you guys see that? Let's see. Yeah, I see it. Well, I see it. Yes, I see it on the screen now. Okay, finally, this thing worked. Okay. So I had a much higher resolution picture of this. I actually bought this picture, which it doesn't have the stupid uh, cam stock thing in the background there. But essentially, if you're this guy here, second to the right, and you take this drug, it's going to curb your appetite. You're pretty much shifting one to the left. It's that dramatic. So you're going from obese to overweight. And by the way, DI Grifter, you can also use the drug if you're overweight. Because you see here, the BMI was 25 to 29. It allows, if you have a BMI of 27 or more with some kind of problem, which most people will have some kind of a problem, then you can mm -hmm. modify as well. So again, the person who's in this category could move from here to here. Again, that's drastically different. I mean, this guy is smiling, so. <laughs> right? So, and again, if you add exercise to this, because I saw one YouTube lady, I mean, she claimed to lose 36 pounds in six months. I mean, I don't really know if she really did or not, but for sure, the people are losing the 15%. That's pretty clear. It was a peer-reviewed study. It's legitimate. It's not bogus. And like I say, if you add real exercise to that, you know, even a real diet plan, let's say, then mm -hmm. for some people, because there were some people who saw something on a news report where some people lost 20% of their body weight, actually. So that's even more than the... Well, okay. So, yeah. That's, yeah, so that would have been 40 pounds. So you now you're talking somebody going from 200 to 160. That's drastic. So in that case, you're probably going from here, this guy with the afro, over the guy with number 70. <laughs> so yeah. Quite a drastic difference, right? That's pretty good. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll bring up the lady version of this as well. So I have to do this bootleg method where I'm copying these tabs over. It's a good thing I still like these tabs up from when I bought the photographs. Uh, so let's see. And then I go to share the screen yet again. If you're backstage, I will be getting to you shortly. The lady picture oh, the, the, right. the 36 pounds, it sounded like it was trying to do the math in my head, less than two pounds a week. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, that's be, a very good point. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. Great point. <laughs> totally forgot to mention that. It's it's weight loss at a normal, healthy rate. It's not something crazy. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. If you lost 30 pounds in this scenario, it was like 35 pounds rather, uh, in a year. Well, on average, the people lost 35 pounds. But my scenario with a 200-pound guy, you know, it wasn't 35. It was 30 pounds. But anyway, um, 
if you lose that in a year, then yes, it's under two pounds a week. And for those of you who don't know, anything above two pounds a week is considered extreme weight loss. And if you do that for an extended period of time, then it's very unhealthy. Stress on your organs, a whole bunch of bad things, right? We did a show on that as well. Yeah, that's where I remember it from. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at here with the ladies, these pictures are even better to me because they're in bathing suits, unlike the guys which are covered up. So here, you're the far lead on the far right. You can go from this lady to this lady, right? See. This lady could be second to the right to this lady. I mean, that's a drastic difference. That's several dress sizes right there, right? That's like a lady who's maybe only comfortable wearing a one-piece bathing suit down to a two-piece bathing suit, right? Dramatic difference. Dramatic difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 15% doesn't sound huge until you see it because I did the math and I was like, wait a second, that's like a whole body size down, you know? And yeah. in some cases, some people moved two body sizes. So they are this lady second to the right and they move all the way second to the left. That's a dramatic difference. That's like two wardrobes right there, right? Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it's almost on sense which granted again, there are some side effects. It's, it's not perfect, right? But as I saw this video of this lady and she said, you know, the side effects she dealt with, she would happily do them again to lose the weight she lost. So they weren't that drastic. I mean, you know, if you're in really bad place physically, I guess it's just like suffering mm -hmm. in the gym with pain in the gym. There's no pain, no gain as the saying goes, right? Mm -hmm. True, true. So so what else do you think about this, D.I. Grifter? What are you thinking here? <laughs> it, it, boy, it just sounds amazing. That's the only thing I can say. It yeah. sounds amazing. It, it, it really does. It really does. You know, like I said, it's not, it's not perfect, mm. right? Um, does have some side effects. Um. Also, in comparison to other weight loss drugs, it's also more effective. And it's all relative, right? Because for another drug, I think it was, I forget the name, but they lost like 8% of their body weight. So like, it's almost double. And again, if you talk, if you compare it to, say, surgery, again, it's non-invasive. You know, you have so many issues that can go wrong with surgery. I'm not a fan of those bariatric type surgeries, shrinking the belly. We touched on that in other shows yeah, you, it's harder to undo that. At least with this, you can stop taking the injections, right? Yeah. Someone cuts you and then put the lap band. Yeah. <laughs> or the versions where they cut out your stomach, there's no undoing that, right? Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. But yeah. I just thought about it. Every drug has side effects, even painkillers. Yes, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Everything has <laughs> a side effect. Yes, that's mm -hmm. a good, good point. All right, let me see. Bring up here. Good evening, Mary Moore Beauty. Ah, this is Latasha's skincare do's and don'ts. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Coach Kirk. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Yes, thanks. Nice. <laughs> and I see there's somebody else backstream as well. Well, they said not to ask too many at the time, so let me wait here. Mm -hmm. This was advice I've seen before. So, okay, cool. So what do you think so far, Latasha? What are you thinking? So it seems like it's something that's pretty effective. And what came to mind, you know, for better outcomes and weight management for those who take it, mm -hmm. maybe if they weaned um, those who are taking it off of the shots and during the course of them taking it, started going over some behavior changes as far as how they perceive eating and and proper portions of eating that it would be more effective um, as a, uh, a tool for weight loss and weight management. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. Good point. As a matter of fact, they could definitely do that because when they first administer the drug, they start you off at some kind of a low dose and you to test tolerance and gradually build up the dosage. So I would assume they could titrate somebody down. I don't know if I have any doctors here in the house or medical type people, but I would assume they could titrate the person down. But I know some people just quit using the drug cold turkey for sure. But yeah, if you put those controls in place, as you said, to yeah. change while you're losing this weight. So you have a whole year to try to change your habits, right? 
you'd have a good time, or two years of the case, maybe. So good point, good point, good point. So what else are you guys thinking? Any any other thoughts on this, uh, Latasha? I wish I would have used it. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Losing weight is hard, but um, yeah. yeah. We're on a, a course to proper eating. And so actually yeah. doing it where you're learning how to eat properly and manage your macros it helps you in the long run and to keep your right. weight off. So, yes. Good point. Yeah. And it only be, it was only approved last year, June, anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. not sure you'd have been able to get it. And for sure now, what I saw is only people with current prescriptions are getting it. Because there's such a shortage of the drug, I don't even think you can get a new new prescription per se. But the last, the latest thing I saw was of two weeks ago in the second by June of this year, they expect to, which that's not that far away from now, to have enough stock, let's say, for new people. All right, I see a super chat. Yes, shout out or oh, super sticker, my first super sticker. Thanks to the positive therapy. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you. I always want to give shout outs to the super chats for sure and super stickers. Okay, I see Dr. Ozioma. Okay. Dili. Let me add them to the stream. Good evening. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. So thank you. I assume based on your title, you're a medical professional. <laughs> yes, I'm a pharmacist, actually. Ah, this is perfect. This is perfect. <laughs> so uh, what do you think about this drug? Is it uh, um, good? This, <laughs> yeah, it's a good drug. Um, this drug yeah. has been on the market. It's just that now it's been approved for a higher dose in weight loss. But this medication right. is actually Ozempic, and it's a diabetes yes. medication. Mm hmm yeah, I know there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies they like to repurpose drugs, you know. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. If there's a side effect for a medication and they can mm -hmm. market that side effect and it's safe, they will repurpose it. Okay, okay, nice, nice. So that's probably part of the reason why one of the good side effects for people using as a weight loss drug was improvement with blood sugar and things of this nature, since the original purpose of the drug was to help with that. Am I getting that right? Yes, but it's at a way lower dose. So the dose that they're okay. giving for weight loss, I believe yeah. is 2.4. Yes. The dose that they give for diabetes is 0 0.5. Ah, that's a big difference. Okay. Yeah. They have two different doses, but it's, the dose okay. is substantially higher mm -hmm. for weight loss. Okay. Okay. Oh, thanks for dropping this medical knowledge on us. Gets the... <laughs> Shout out to that. So, so what else do you think about this drug? Eh? Any other things you want to share with us or questions or comments? Yeah. I, I think that in terms of weight loss goals and all the mm -hmm. other medications on the market or that has been mm -hmm. on the market for it, this drug seems to be the safest. Um, yeah. Patients have been on this drug for years, so it's proven to yeah. be safe. The only thing different is the dose, but okay. um, it's not going to affect the heart like the other amphetamine type drugs did, mm -hmm. fen, fen, and stuff like that. Right, those that got banned, right? Okay. It, exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point because, yeah, when I was doing my research, I stumbled upon some of those things. I'd forgotten about them, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's usually some side effect with a jitchiness or some kind of heart problem, like you said, because it was a uh, stimulant. So exactly. That's a, that's a very good point. Very good point. So, Christian, did the, uh, I know I saw an article. I did not read it. Something to do with venom of some poisonous uh, lizard. <laughs> Somehow this drug is tied to that. I don't know if you know anything about that by any chance. No, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, like you said earlier, we have this hormone in our body. And True. typically with medications, we try to replicate what our body already has mm -hmm. and then give it like insulin. Where our body uses insulin, they gave, give us insulin. So okay. I, I haven't heard the venom story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't click on it. It's, yeah, there was so much information. I never got around to it. But okay. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. A very good point. Very good point. You're welcome. 
So let's see here. Do I have any? It's not missing any other thing here. Oh, oh, I did. So the realist she. Thanks for that super chat. <laughs> have you found this with you with your clients? Very good question. I've heard people say that it takes two weeks of dieting before a person starts losing weight. Have you found this to be true with your clients? It depends on the starting point for the client. Like I had a guy who was already pretty lean uh, and he, because his metabolism was working really good, he actually wanted to gain weight, but at first he lost fat, ironically, in a week. Where I've other, had other people who are similarly, they lose weight quickly, but they're very big. But then other people, because their metabolism is so messed up, they did not immediately start losing weight. But the vast majority of people will start losing weight, start losing weight rather, <laughs> in the first week. Um, when people are doing it, the common mistakes people do, they just slash their calories, right? But most people are starting from too low of a base. And they are right, their metabolism is messed up from previous times. They yo-yo dieted, yo-yo get the weight up and down. So they suddenly slash. And if they're already too low, they may not lose any weight. Are they already doing too much cardio or whatever the case may be? It varies person to person. But by and large, when you start a program, I mean, we've all done it. We start doing something and you notice something within that first week. It may just be water weight. <laughs> it may not be fat loss. But usually you will start because the biggest drops usually is at the beginning when you first start. You know, if you're 300 pounds, you could lose well, five, 10 pounds in a week or two. That's possible because you're starting from such a high point, let's say. And if you weigh 140 or 150, maybe it doesn't move that first week or maybe it's half a pound. So it's kind of relative. So good question. A very good question. And thanks again for the super chat. So, Dr. Ozioma, Odili. Yes. The name Odili, where is that? I've not seen that in a show, Odili. Um, it's a Nigerian name. Yeah, Odili. Wasn't there, what's, what was the show with the guy? And he's an African actor. I think he played a character called Odili. I'm what not sure. He, I remember it was an HBO thing. Oz, I'm not sure if he was in Oz or something else. Odili. Does anybody know HBO show Oz? Was that guy, was his name Odili in the show? <laughs> so I know I've heard that name in a show before. Just can't remember it now. Okay, gotcha. So have you had to prescribe this drug before by any chance? No, um, I've never dispensed it or anything. Okay. Um, not in this form, only in the diabetes form. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, well, I guess from talking to your peers or just things you hear, or et cetera, what have you heard about it? And if, if only anecdotally, okay, you mentioned it was by far the safest one. Yes, I had read that as well, but anything else you could share with us? Um, no, I mean, this is, like I said, this is not a new drug. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I've read some clinical trials and it's, you know, okay. said to be true, but, um, you know, and they kept it off for over two years, for two years. Yeah. Um, someone asked in the chat if, you know, they, is the reason why they stopped is because their appetite was suppressed for so long. Um, it, it's, it does, it's not a matter of how long it was suppressed. It's just, is it going to be suppressed anymore? So unless they right. train their mind to eat smaller portions then, you know, it'll continue. But if they were just, you know, not eating because of the medication and then their uh -huh. appetite comes back. Yeah. So uh -huh. it, it's, you have to use it with, um, you know, you have to use it with your cognitive as well. Train your mind. Yeah. Okay. This is how much I'm going to eat. So when you're off uh -huh. of it, you're still used to eating that small portion. That's a great point. Great point. Great point. <laughs> Because, yeah, the impression I got, they didn't say it explicitly, but at least the stuff I read is that they had not done that. So as soon as they removed the Band-Aid, this being the drug, immediately they went back to what they were doing before. The appetite immediately came back or quick came back quickly and they went back to their bad habits. So the weight came back on, you know, because, yeah, if, you, if you're not making that lifestyle change, you want to cognitively, if you're not making that change, then, yeah, you're going to run back into problems, right? Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, like I said, it's a safe drug. The, the only issue would be having access to it. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, insurance companies with, with medications this high, insurance mm -hmm. companies typically want you to try other means before they pay for that. So it depends on how good their insurance plan is. Okay. Because this medication, like you said, is going to be about $2,000. Yes. There are uh, coupons, manufacturer coupons. So if you go mm -hmm. on the manufacturer's website, you can apply. Yeah, I think that's some called a savings card, which if you qualify, it was like $25 per month for up to six months. Right. And, and that reminds me now, the I did see a lady who did a video and she said six months. I wonder if that's why. Like she, she was probably something like, because I remember thinking, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you keep using it for the year? But she was probably something like that. She qualified for this thing through the manufacturer. Because yeah, I went to their website. You can fill in the information. I will tell you whether you qualify or not. But yeah, they some of them limit it to six months. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes with some medications, sometimes after six months, you can reapply. So uh, I don't know how this medication is doing it, but for other mm -hmm. manufacturers, they do allow you to reapply after six months. Okay. Okay. Got you. Aha. Uh -huh. I did not know that. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, only certain medications. So I can't speak on Wegovi, but I, you know, mm -hmm. some manufacturers do allow that. Okay. Got you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the information. I see, welcome. we have Tammy back here. Let me add Tammy. Good evening, Tammy. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Doing great. Okay. So we've got the English accent, got the Nigerian accent and the Jamaican accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. So so what do you think of the, of this topic so far, Tammy? Um, well, first, I want to make sure that you're aware it's Adebisi from oh. that show that you oh. were speaking about. I loved yes. that show. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, you, um, know, you know the Odilis? I'm sorry to interrupt. It's from that book. Oh, Darren, I can't remember. It's written by this it's a fantasy book, and it got rated the top 100 fantasy books of all time by Time magazine already. So an Af it's an African author who wrote it, and one of the characters is Odili. Oh, yeah, I think I, we're going to try to make it into a movie. Something, yeah, it's re really awesome. But sorry, I digress. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, Doctor O, I'm nowhere near as knowledgeable as you are, <laughs> but I did want to say this drug is ridiculously expensive. So yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering who can actually afford this medication. Um, you know, in the black community. Who who's going to be able to afford this? There's so many racial and socioeconomic disparities that are existing in the world. So if we think about the people who have this medication or who have access to it, um, it's really going to be the top tier percentage, I would say, of, of the community. Yeah, Dr. O, you're probably better able to answer this. Before you do... It was hard for me to find information to answer that question because I was doing all sorts of Google searches and it was difficult to find A, what it would cost with insurance and what's the likelihood of it. All I could find was that, I don't know, it was 40%, 50%, something like that because A, it's a new drug and like what Dr. O said and what you just said, the for, it's hard to get prescriptions for such drugs basically, which would then limit it to wealthier people because yeah that's more than a mortgage right <laughs> exactly and many oh. insurance companies i'm sure are not covering it due to it being so new um right. dr o you could probably expand on this no one probably has a generic yet so there's not no. uh, a price a less pricier alternative for people to be prescribed yes um you made a really good point um, as I was saying earlier, it's limited to how good a person's insurance is. And yes. if a person doesn't have good insurance, mo they, you know, they most likely won't get it covered. But one thing insurance companies look at in the long term is if I don't help my, my customer or my patient lose weight now, I could potentially be paying $30,000, $40,000 to fix their heart attack. I could potentially uh. be paying $50,000, you know, if they had a stroke. So, right. um, you know, they believe that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So most likely they will pay for it, but you you would have to show kind of like um, weight loss surgery. They just most mm-hmm. insurances don't pay weight loss surgery out the rip. You have to show that you've tried to lose weight for six months, that you've went okay. to a nutritionist, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it may not be the first thing they pay for, but it'll you know in the end it will save them more money if they get the person to lose weight because then they won't be paying other diabetes you know diabetes medications are expensive they can range from one to five thousand dollars a month versus just paying this for a year and then now it prevents them from having diabetes it prevents them Mm -hmm. from having high blood pressure it prevents Mm -hmm. them from having high cholesterol so um but yeah, if a person doesn't have insurance, it's going to be hard. I've had patients come and get their medication that they needed and they see the price and they tell me I'd rather die. Than pay for oh, the- my goodness. Wow. That's insane. Yes. yes. Affordability and access to the medication to me are the hugest drawbacks of, of this drug. Um, but hopefully in the future, it can be something that can be accessible to more people. Um, right. Because if you think about people in the community who are severely overweight or morbidly obese, mm-hmm. they tend to be uh, people of a, of a different, uh, I would say, skin color, um, yes. obviously. So, but the, I mean, we could get into the whole debate as to where that originates from in terms of diet and, and family history. But mm-hmm. if something like this can be available, it, it would be, it would be awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we black people make up, unfortunately, the largest part of the obese population. I know I was in it myself. Right. And yeah, there's so many things, the food deserts, <clears throat> things from our culture with the foods we had coming back from slavery. I mean, there's the list goes on and on and on. So, yeah, it, hopefully Dr. O is right in a sense that, like, for example, I have sleep apnea and I remember. So I got the CPAP machine used it and then because i didn't like it it didn't work so great then they would then authorize something more expensive let us use this oral plants at night it's like a retainer basically but like dr o said i had to try something first the cheaper method or alternative let's say so hopefully what she's saying would be the case where they look at it because i know they have the actuaries where if they're just running the numbers and they're like well we can spend two grand on this person per month or five grand. So let's do the two grand. You know, I know with the actors, statistically, they should be able to come with a number. But of course, things aren't always black and white, as you're saying, Tammy. <laughs> They're not, unfortunately, all black and white. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. Doctor, do you know anything more about typically what happens with new drugs? Because the only thing I saw was that there will not be any generic for a very long time with any new drug. I think it's yes. like 20 years or something like that. So um, new drugs, they once they come out, mm. they have a patent. A mm-hmm. patent states right. that no other company can produce this drug for a certain amount of time. Now, once the patent ends, they have competition. So there's going to be mm-hmm. a generic out. And then at that point, sometimes the company that owns the drug will also create um, a generic for it. So and then they keep okay. the price high. So it may drop from 2000 a month to 1000 a month unless another mm-hmm. company wants to make it 500 and they have someone to compete with. But as mm-hmm. of now, they're the only person that can supply it and they try to recoup all the cost that they spent researching the drug. So it's going to be a while. It's going to be at least seven, eight years before a generic okay. comes. Okay, sorry. Not as long as 20. That's good. So, you know, in our community, so a lot of people don't have insurance. From what you've seen, if somebody goes to say the Affordable Care Act, because I don't know the answer to this, is that insurance good enough to get access to a drug like this? Um, typically not. I'd say no, if I had to guess too. Yes. Typically not, just because they can exercise. So they're looking at like you can exercise versus Mm -hmm. a person who has diabetes. You know, yes, they can exercise, but if they don't have medication, they can pass, you know, within the immediate year. So yeah, typically not. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So this is Oh no, go ahead. Th- this drug will be considered more of a luxury. 
Okay, mm. like surgery in a sense. Okay. Yeah, like Viagra, for example. Most okay. insurances, they only cover um, five pills every 20 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Because mm. it's a luxury. Okay. And some don't cover it at all. At all, yes. I did not know this. Okay, with all those ads I kept seeing on TV, Cialis and all these other things, I assumed they were covered. But I guess if you're a gentleman with that problem, you probably will buy it no matter what. I guess. And it's about thirty dollars a pill without insurance. Oh. Okay. Wow. So My now, goodness. Yeah. So I think something you're touching on, Tammy. Now it's making it even more clear because then, then some doctor O said, "How good your insurance is, right? So if you don't have a really good job." and or with a really good company, then your insurance is probably not good enough to get you said a drug. I would say so, because yeah. like I said, I feel like it's the top tier yeah. of society that's even uh, available and even know about these things. I mean, who, who, what kind of population knows about the new things that happen, the new advancements yeah. that are out? It's really not your poor... Um, and people in a certain socioeconomic group, they're not right. aware, they're not in the know. So they're not, by the time it, it's something, it's been mm -hmm. watered down or it's a common thing is when it gets down to that certain group. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I remember reading a book and this guy, he had a great example of what you're talking about. He said, you know, cutting edge stuff, you were saying, it's funny, it starts and sometimes with horse trainers and bodybuilders. Horse trainers because they're willing to pump the horse full of anything and bodybuilders because they're willing to pump themselves full of anything, right? And then it filters <laughs> down, yeah, to Olympic athletes and then wealthy people. And from the beginning to 20 years later, that's when he gets the general population, he said. Yeah. And this is, this kind of reminds me of that because yeah, you're right. How many people would even know, know to ask about this drug? That's the first thing. I hadn't heard of it. You know, yeah. um, I'm, I'm overweight yeah. and I'd love yeah. to have something like this, but yeah. I know I can't afford it. Yeah. Yep. 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 And yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because I said, this is the first thing that I've seen that, because I went in it thinking it would be nonsense. So I was very surprised when it appears to not be nonsense. Uh, um, and, you know, especially if you use it as a stepping stone, as Dr. O said, and a couple of people in the chat said, then, you know, D.I. Grifter said, then more than likely you can get it, it can be sustainable. It's, it's, it's like training wheels. You know, maybe you can't ride the bicycle right off the bat, but you have the training wheel, you get to figure out your balance, take it off, and you're good to go, so to speak. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, so Dr. O, is there anything that you can think of that you mentioned the the programs these companies have, like I said, I saw they're called savings cards. Are there any other tips you could give to people? I mean, whether on the show or somebody seeing the rebroadcast of this, where if you don't qualify, like what can you do to try to qualify, so to speak? Um, it's really <laughs> nothing you can do because it's still on patent. Unfortunately, pharmaceutical okay. companies only care about money. Yeah. And it's unfortunate if you don't have one, you're you're not their concern if you don't have money. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so this is not one of those cases where people are going to be going to Mexico for that drug because I guess what they're going for generics in that case, or is it just a cheaper version of the same drugs that would be sold in another country, for example? It, so the if someone went to Mexico for it, it would kind of be it would be created in an under the table fashion, right? It would be another okay. company that's not authorized to make this drug. They're making oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now the no thing FDA is- No approval, basically. Right. Okay. So like I said, this drug has been around and there's other mm -hmm. drugs in this drug class. It just hasn't been approved for weight loss. So when they say it hasn't yeah. been approved for weight loss, it's not that it won't work for weight loss, it's that right. they haven't studied it. But Good something, point. Good point. something of note is this drug has been mm -hmm. shown to cause uh, thyroid tumors in rodents in a dose dependent fashion, meaning that the higher dose that they got, the more likely that the rodent would get uh, thyroid cell tumors. Okay. And yeah, since. Mm -hmm. and no, since no, no, this, <laughs> Since this weight loss drug is mm -hmm. about. 400% higher of a dose 
than the um, diabetes medication, that mm -hmm. means that they're 400% more at risk for that side effect. Mm, okay. And when drugs come out, you really don't know what's going to happen in five years to the people who took it until you wait five years. Right, right. So it's almost best to, if a person did want to take this medication, they mm -hmm. should... Um, lose weight as fast as they can and get off of it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. That, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I did see the thing about the thyroid cancer. The only reference I saw was, uh, was an article, I don't know it was Forbes or something where the doctor they were interviewing was saying, yes, but it's the, again, the mouse models. And they were thinking that it's not as, they were saying it's highly unlikely. So, of course, I'm not the doctor, so I don't know if they were either exaggerating the highly unlikely or they were accurate with the highly unlikely. But everything you just said made a heck of a lot of sense, right? <laughs> it's a significant increase in doses, and it's only been studied for a couple of years. You're right. Uh, that is true. Yeah. I mean, it, it hasn't been, um, I'm not, it's just, I'm reading it now. It says warning mm -hmm. risk of thyroid C, C, tell, uh, C cell tumors. Yes. And so it wants to warn you that it can have, you know, if you see a mass on your neck, mm -hmm. you know, early detection is good. But um, when they say it's highly unlikely, it's because they haven't seen it yet. If oh. it was likely, they would have yeah. seen it in a lot more people. So it. it's, okay. it's highly unlikely. That means that it's only a 1% chance that it could happen. Not that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're in that 1%, then that's a problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a risk. Mm -hmm. You have to choose your poison. Do you want to die from mm -hmm. obesity or do you want to have a 99% chance that you won't get sick from this drug and drop 30, 30 35 pounds? <laughs> That's a great point. Yes. That's a great point. I agree. I agree. So, so it says possible thyroid tumors. Is that, you can talk about like a lump. If you have thyroid cancer, is that even one of the symptoms that it's a physical something you could tell physically hey i got thyroid cancer because i saw this strange lump i mean uh you know typically it, your thyroid gland shouldn't have a lump so if you're filling your body you know mm -hmm. anywhere that goes for anywhere yeah. in your body if you feel a lump that wasn't there before yeah. it, you know that's a sign right. mm -hmm. okay yeah that makes sense that's true you see a strange it could lump. possibly <laughs> not just be a goiter it could be something else so yeah right. that's true Got it, got it, got it. No, that's a great point. That's a great point. Oh, wow. I see I got another super chat here from D.I. Grifto. <laughs> thanks for all the knowledge. Yes, you're welcome. And thanks for the guests. They're dropping lots of them, Dr. O and Tammy, uh, Latasha, and D.I. Grifto himself. Yes, I see now why the show, shows are much better when you actually have people talking back to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know what you may find out because I, I just learned a lot myself from talking to you ladies. So thanks for sharing that information. Sure. Many people did not know. Okay. So I'm I don't going know. to exit, uh, Coach. I'm going to go, but I love the show. I'm a new right. subscriber. Thank you. Uh, just okay. started watching. I've been binging your videos. So everybody okay. definitely like and subscribe. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye bye. Have a wonderful night. Thanks. Bye. bye. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, Dr. O, you said that, you know, there are other, these other drugs. Yeah, the, the wimpier versions and the other ones. I think one of them was made by this, the same company, Novo Nordisk, but it's half as effective with similar side effects. So, you know, it's, right. it's back to the pick your poison type thing. I think what you said is the best thing. You use this thing as little as possible and then you move on, right? Exactly. It's, it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, we live in where people get on meds and they stay on them. You know, it, it, the analogy I tell people, if you if you had a kid coming to you with a cut and you kept putting a bandaid on, eventually you should stop and figure out what is cutting the kid. <laughs> it's not just keep putting a bandaid on, right? Like exactly. not stitching it up. You should like, how are they cutting themselves? But we tend to just keep taking another pill or another injection and so on and so forth. But I think if they do what you said, I mean, like the lady, the video I saw, she dropped 36 pounds in six months, right? So... Hopefully that she made some changes and hopefully she's now motivated to stay on that path, so to speak. Right. So exactly. 
Yeah, because she definitely had some side effects. There's no doubt about that. Uh, she talked about gastrointestinal issues, which seems to be the most common side effect for this drug. Yeah, uh, because the peptide is naturally secreted. Um, it, it works in your stomach. So it makes sense mm -hmm. that that's how the side effects will be in the GI system. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. But yeah, when you get in a bad state physically, there is going to be some issues. You know, I remember... When my skin was a mess, getting a haircut was embarrassing and my scalp would just flake like crazy, right? And of course, now I get a haircut, it doesn't flake, but, <laughs> you know, I'm not obese anymore. So, yeah, but you really do have to pick your poison, as you say. If you're in that state where either you can't or you don't know how or don't know what to do, but you can get this drug, this could help get you on the way, the path, especially if you qualify for one of those programs where it's the $25 a month, or you have really good insurance, as you point out, you know? Yes. So, you know, yeah. with being obese, it's 100% mm -hmm. proven that it's going to knock years off your life. But taking the medication, it's not 100% that the person can get thyroid cancer. So it seems like mm. if you weigh your risk... Yeah. <laughs> you know, it leads, <laughs> it leads towards the medication. Yeah, great point. <laughs> <laughs> Love that point. Great point. Great point. Yeah. Choose the lesser of two evils. <laughs> exactly. That, that's a good point. As a matter of fact, I got another Igwe's daughter. Please don't go to Mexico. They're looking for a cheap alternative. Yes. <laughs> that is true. Lots of, um, I only just recently realized how dangerous these surges and things can be. I didn't realize people were losing their lives, you know. Going to going to places for cheaper surgeries, basically, or Brazilian butt lifts, or what, whatever, you know, they were simply not coming back. I did not notice until recently. And I didn't even know how really appreciate how dangerous these things were. So that's another reason to take the drug, though, because you know it's non-invasive. You have a bad reaction, you can stop taking it. Somebody cuts you open, it goes wrong, you get some infection, blah blah blah. You know, it's just. Yeah, so many more things can go wrong for you. So I agree. Do not, please don't go <laughs> to some, another country trying to find some cheap alternative. Or as you point out, which I did not know, it's a bootleg version of the drug. Like I knew people like these seniors, you hear the stories I'm going to Mexico. I just assumed it was being sold legitimately cheaper in the country. And I'm from Jamaica and sometimes drugs are cheaper in Jamaica and it's still the real drug than you know, it Europe or America. But yeah. Because there's no generics for any of these drugs, this particular okay. drug will be a bootleg. In terms okay. of other countries, it's the real drug. You just mm -hmm. have to wonder, um, are the standards being checked? Okay. Like for mm -hmm. us, even in the pharmacy, sometimes there's drugs that are recalled. It says, oh, we found this poison in the drug. Mm -hmm. This happened. We need to call everyone and tell them to stop taking it. It happens often. But oh, the, okay. the less standards that the country has, mm -hmm. the more likely that there could be some type of carcinogen found in the drug on accident mm -hmm. or okay. some type, of, you know, something that's in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. Right, right. I didn't realize that. Although I remember I have a doctor friend i remember years ago you told me don't get very sick <laughs> that was his advice you don't want to get very sick he said don't get very sick there's so many things can go wrong between the hospital and the pharmacist like don't get very sick yeah. <laughs> i remember him telling me that yeah it's a lot uh yeah wilder than i realized to be honest uh yeah i did not realize this that it's that yeah i guess you know the moral of the story is to me big picture is take care of your health. And if you're already in a bad situation, try to change it as soon as possible. Using your analogy, get off of it as quickly as possible. Similarly, I would say, try to fix your health as soon as possible. You know, you never know when you're, you're going to end up in some bad situation. Hopefully you change before, you course correct before that happens, right? You know, what I predict with this medication, knowing mm -hmm. the pharmaceutical industry is that people are going to be on it way longer than two years. Um, you know, take high blood pressure medication, for example. If a person mm -hmm. is overweight and they're diagnosed with high blood pressure, mm -hmm. they can take the medication while they're losing weight and get off of it. Right. Some patients do get off of it. Mm -hmm. But the lifestyle or, you know, the way it is, is that you just take it forever. You're yeah. going to take it forever. You're going to say, I've seen patients lose weight and say, mm -hmm. hey, I don't need my diabetes medication. Anymore. Yeah. But it's very rare. So yeah. it ends up being a maintenance drug. 
Mm-hmm. So hopefully this medication does not become a maintenance drug, but you know, um, you get money when people are going to see their doctors every month. You yeah. get money when people are coming into the pharmacy every month. Yeah. Being healthy is going to deplete their pockets. Mm-hmm. Okay, so interesting. So Ashley, okay, when the substance is introduced, some something to fix our Reversible. Okay. So a little controversy here. <laughs> um so okay, let me just on this one decision. Okay, so our Ashley look is scrolling back through the other points about yeah, you're be it's essentially just saying, you know, because I think I put up a later comment. Yeah, you unless one is interested in being a guinea pig, a guinea pig rab, I should say. Yes, this is true, Ashley. I guess it's kind of like the pick your poison thing, basically, right? You're right. You definitely could be a guinea pig and bad things. Once you introduce something to your body, which you just laid it down, you can't go undo it, so to speak. So in, it's kind of like a question somebody asked me earlier. Would I advise um, coaching somebody to get on that stuff? I would prefer that they not just try diet and exercise. As long as you're hitting your various macros, you can still eat bad things, quote unquote bad things, right? If you love pizza... You can fit pizza in. You just can't have your cake and eat it. You can't eat the pizza, the cake, and the Starbucks coffee, right? The, the whatever with the gazillion carbs. You kind of have to pick one. And then you match the macros around your vice. Let's say if your vice is pizza, you know, it has a ton of carbs, some fat. You just need to reduce your fat, have some low-fat protein that can still taste good, skinless thighs, shrimp. It's a bunch of things that still taste good, right? The problem is most people, they load the pizza and the fried chicken and uh, whatever Starbucks coffee and, and, and yeah, then it's a, it's a mess. So you're right about the guinea pig, Ashley. I think for some people who either don't know, which comes back to the don't know thing, I know that hindered me and holds back a lot of people. You just don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> There's so many things you don't know. So you do your best. You try. You go to the gym. You try to eat healthy, and you're not getting the results. Yeah. So I think it's a complicated topic. But you're right. You are being a guinea pig. The question is, if that is, it's better to be a guinea pig with a chance of something bad happening, or staying clinically be shaving years off your life. I think that's the point Dr. O was making, I believe. But hey, if you want to come on and chat feel free to join the panel <laughs> as well uh but yes all, all open to various viewpoints uh, yeah true money is flowing good point here by the positive therapist that's true money flowing in the medical industry when people are sick yes it's sick care basically uh it is sick care that is exactly what it is uh, i remember a doctor telling me when he took his parents off some kind of uh, i think cholesterol medication and he was telling me that, you know, Kirk, if his parents were to pass away, he could he could sue the doctor. And he said, this system is so crazy. <laughs> he says, based on their numbers, if something bad happened, somebody could. And this is why doctors, he said, aren't going to be willing to take. They're not going to tell the patients, you know what, work out, eat healthy and stop taking this medication. Right. It's they're motivated to tell them, nope, you take your keep taking your medication and so on and so forth. So they because it's such a litigious environment people can get sued so easily doctors can get sued so easily welcome to the show ella taff vum today i'm not sure what that means it's probably a typo ah ashley's coming from the legal side aha uh-huh. so i'm guessing ashley has a legal background so we have a pharmacist and a lawyer so i don't know if ashley do you want to jump on the panel <laughs> feel free here is the link It'd be interesting to hear the, oops, that is not the link. I was going to paste the thing where I showed you guys the picture. Um, Dr. O, anything else unique you know about these kind of drugs that, I guess, let me put it this way. Is there anything in your day-to-day life as a pharmacist that most of us do not know? <laughs> things that you're like, man, if these people only knew. Okay, you've, you've told us several things like that. Is there anything else like that you can think of? No, not really. Because like I said before, this drug is at a higher dose, you know. So we all yeah. the side effects, we know them. But then it's like once the dose is increased, 
it can change in terms of long term. But it's a it's a fairly safe drug and all medications have side effects. You know, you shouldn't yeah. allow a side effect to stop you. If that's the case, if that's the case, no one would take anything. Um, mm. Some, a some yes. acid reflux medications increase the risk of stomach cancer and people are still taking it. It's over the counter. It's flying off the shelf. You know, I, I, maybe it's because they're not aware, but all medications have side effects. It's just do the benefits outweigh the risk. Okay. As long as the benefits outweigh the risk, you just use it. Yeah. Sorry, could you repeat what that drug was you said that was flying off the shelf? Well, what was it for, rather? <laughs> um, Nexium, Prilosec. Okay. Oh, Prilosec OTC. Oh, yeah, wow. They, they increase the risk of stomach cancer and they increase the risk of dementia in elderly. Wow. Yeah. But that's... That's yeah. not a that's not a known side effect. You know, you would yeah. only know that if you're a pharmacist. Yeah. So when people ask me which one should I take, I tell them to take Pepsid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did not. Yeah, you know something funny, man. With these drugs, right? I think it was my dad point out when these the TV ads would start. They they talk for like ten to thirty seconds about the wonders of the drug. Then they spend another two minutes talking about. Side effects could be death. Side effects could be <laughs> this. Side effects could be that. It's like, the, yeah, it's like, man, why would you take this? It's like, yeah, I remember we'd always laugh when we heard these drugs. It's like, yeah, 30 seconds of wonderful and then two minutes of all these terrible things that could happen. Uh, could lead to cancer. Could lead to erectile dysfunction. If you have thoughts of suicide, please stop taking this drug immediately. As a matter of fact, this drug, it had that in there as one of the potential side effects. They said if it you're suicide, blah, 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 do not take the drug. I'm like, wow. Yeah. But so does Tamiflu. And people still take Tamiflu every time they get the flu, if they I can afford know it. Tamiflu does that. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Especially in children, it causes them to uh, have su suicide ideation, meaning that oh, they yeah. start thinking about killing themselves. I did not know that. That is very scary. Tamiflu is, yeah, I, w I did not realize that, to be honest. Okay, wow. Yeah. So Ashley brings up a good punch. Practicing MDLs, which is basically a pool of money set aside by the pharmaceutical companies to pay those who have undergone negative side effects. Okay. I remember with the pharmaceutical companies, I'm not sure if Ashley or you, doctor, can correct me on this, but isn't there a fund, a government fund that our taxpayer dollars goes into? So let's say a vaccine or something, you have some terrible effect and you win the lawsuit. It's not the pharmaceutical company that pays directly. It's this fund that pays. Um, that I know right? they have insurance. I'm not sure mm -hmm. about the fund, but I know yeah. that most of these companies have insurance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Huh? Yeah, Western medicine is, is not designed to prevent, but to treat. <laughs> this is so true. This is so true. It's Western medicine is designed. I gotta do the ear horn. <laughs> yes, sick care, not health care, or not prevent care. Yeah, it's funny because I also do auditing. So you have preventive controls, detective controls, preventive controls. You lock your door. You you know you wear a seatbelt. Detective controls would be the alarm that went off after the person broke in. <laughs> you, you would want preventive controls, uh, so to speak. That would be optimal. Prevent the problem, um, not just treat it. Not, not you, back to my Band-Aid analogy, I would say. So, okay. No, great points, great points, great points. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's, it's, it's not as simple as it looks. I did not realize it was this complicated. Before I did the research and just tonight from talking to everybody and all the different comments that have come in, it's been eye-opening. <laughs> it's been... Okay, so Ashley, so I guess she wants to come on. Let me send the link. It's not that simple. What's the link? So that's the link for you guys. Feel free, anybody, just click the link, come backstage. And if you're... Well, everybody has been camera shy tonight, so they keep their cameras <laughs> up. That's fine. <laughs> that is fine. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, till until I did this, I didn't realize how many people were shy to even put comments in the comments, to be honest. I, I did not realize this. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. I was very surprised by that. Um, yeah, that was very unique. Yeah, I'm curious to get this the legal aspect of this sort of thing, to be honest, because that's yeah, that'd be interesting. Very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, it's quite the pickle. Um, but it's crazy that you said. Dr. Oda, some people come and look at the price of the drug and said, yeah, they'd rather die. No. Yeah, it's... Yeah. I mean, it's honestly it's sad sometimes. I find myself uh, paying for people's medications if it's wow. affordable. Like, like mm -hmm. you know, if they have like an antibiotic, right? That's not mm -hmm. something they're going to need every month. Yeah. And I know their condition is going to get worse if mm -hmm. I don't pay for it. So mm -hmm. those medications, if it's affordable, I'll take care of them, but it's sad. It's yeah. really sad. Well, that's very, very nice of you. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, let's say what goes around comes around. So, hopefully, you'll get some good karma on the other end. That, oh, that's pretty nice. Amen. Yeah, what they're saying, you're blessed to be a blessing. So, yeah, <laughs> that is that is a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, yes, Ashley. <laughs> Coming in hot and heavy with <laughs> this is a interesting point here. Let me see. I gotta. You know, so, I'm interested in this medication, even well, after you, knowing you, everything about uh, it. Mm -hmm. I would try. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so Ashley says, "Won't need to lose weight if you're dead." So <laughs> <laughs> Ashley is really anti the medication. So <laughs> I, it yeah. says I'm looking at. The site now, 30% of the people in the trial mm -hmm. lost over 20% of their yeah. body weight. So it's yeah. like it can be higher than 15. Yes, I was conservative to 15 because I did say, I think I said this, but I didn't elaborate on it. I think I saw a group that had lost to 20%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the main endpoint of the trial was 15%. The 20% mm -hmm. is by the way. So it's yeah. not a, it's not something that they speak about first because it wasn't yeah. the the goal that they the were majority. trying to get. Correct, correct. Right. Correct. I I would yeah. take my chances for a year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is it's also while they told people to eat a bit better and work out, the eat better most likely was the appetite restriction. So they might still have been eating terribly, like not enough protein, for example. You know, they mac they they eat too much fat. Or too much carbs and nothing of protein. That'd be a common mistake. And even that lady that lost 36 pounds, she said she didn't exercise. She clearly said, you know, and it wasn't gimmicky. I, I really believed when she said, yeah, you know, she wanted to and this and that, blah, 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 blah. But it wasn't the usual gimmicky video, so to speak. Uh, so I could believe that. Long story short is if you're doing the drug for a short period and you know what you're doing that wise, or if you're simply just more active, you know, then, yeah, you could really, that's, that's probably those people in that 20% right there. And I'm sure there's right. some people that have gotten to 25%. And again, if you remember those pictures I showed you, this would be a dramatic change, right? For you to go from that person on the far right, like two spots over, that's, that's like two wardrobes right there. You know, I changed my wardrobe like at least three times when I was losing weight. So that, I don't know how many dress sizes that is in dress sizes, but I know it's dramatically different. <laughs> it's dramatically different, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're saying, Ashley. Like, if I was a beast now, I would definitely be tempted to try the drug for sure. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah, I probably would, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so based on my risk appetite, I would probably try. I mean, I would still be working out, but I just want to speed things up. Oh, you would try it too? <laughs> yes, I would definitely try it. I would definitely yeah, try it. Yeah, me too. I definitely have the risk. I mean, granted, I, I wouldn't use it only because I'd want to just maximize everything. If it's going to bring down my appetite, then I'd be crushing it in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to worry about my ice cream cake sandwiches, right? <laughs> if I don't have the appetite for them. So, yeah. There is the link again for any of you guys who want to come backstage. Um been pretty some very very good comments yeah actually this has been the best show for the yeah i can scroll multiple pages to see all the comments wow and this is not even all the comments since i had my technical difficulties at the beginning i'm sure if i look over here at the other screen yeah, there's even more comments 
Yeah, this has been very educational. Hope yes, hope you guys like it. So, is there any other topics you guys would like to hear in the future? You know, to send me a message, or you can just say it verbally, <laughs> Doctor O, or send me a message in the chat as well. Any things you guys would want me to talk about? I'll happily do the research and put together something for you guys. And it's free, so yeah. I'm not charging for this. <laughs> uh, I agree with Tony. Do, 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 do. Let's see. I'm not. Oh, Ashley says she doesn't know what to go back. Say, so Ashley, there's this link. It says StreamYard in it. Let me send it again. You just click that link. That's how everybody else is getting in. Because I believe I'm highlighted in yellow, right? When I make a post. Yes, I am. So you see the link, it says streamyard.com, MK, blah, 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 blah. Just click that and that will bring you backstage, basically. Okay, we have Ashley. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ashley. How are you? How are you? I'm well. Hi, Dr. O. <laughs> I, I love I love your line. We don't need, won't need to lose weight if you're dead. <laughs> so okay. So first of all, let let me say that I am an advocate for certain medications because we we have to kind of start from scratch and realize that from the inception of of time, mm -hmm. we have mass production of our food, and then as of late we have lots of toxins that are in our foods, right? right. So we're going to be sick. We know that cancer is more prevalent now, right? So we are subject to carcinogens when we walk out outside, right? Mm -hmm. So right. it's not so much that I'm against medicine because I am not. Um, and I'm not against Western medicine because I've had yeah. five cesareans. Um, okay. And so I... I don't know how how things would have fared if I wouldn't have been able to be at a hospital. But right. from a legal perspective with regard to new medications, so um, MDLs are basically multi-district litigation claims. So we're talking about Xarelto, Pradaxa, uh, mm -hmm. Bladder Mesh Sling, um, Eshore, e which... 99.9% .9 of these are still on the market. Okay. Um, and the fact is, is that let's say, and I'm just, and I'm just using rough, rough numbers. Let's say mm -hmm. that a million people are, you know, prescribed the drug. If okay. only about a hundred K of those people die, the drug is still going to be on the market. And that's yeah. fact. Oh, and okay. if they get sick, like for example, the guys that were on that, um, you know, suffered a uh, gynecomastia that the, the men that grew breast, they were yeah. just paid. Right. Okay. Nobody knew that they were going to grow breast until after <laughs> they started growing breast. Oh, right. So, yeah. um, and so there is a pool of money that the far, so, so I mean, you like, you know, you have to think about it. So if I'm going to make 2 billion off of yeah. selling the drug and I have to pay like 2 million because some people died or got yeah. sick. It's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, it's a drop in the bucket, yeah. Yeah, so that's my only point is that okay. I, I was unaware of all of this until I started, you know, working on, on that side where, <laughs> and it it's no respect of persons. You have people that are wealthy. You have people that are not, not wealthy. If you take the drugs that have not been vetted for a particular amount of time, you could be subjecting yourself to some serious issues. And so my only point is, let's wait a few years, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know someone or can at least listen to a, a true testimony, not test, right. test subjects, but someone that has lived, work. And, and, and then we don't even know. Um, I think someone talked about like, you know, African-Americans, we have certain chemical com compounds and different things that affect us differently than others, right? So just just being sure that we don't jump on on something that's an easy fix, but okay. just kind of give it time. Gotcha. No, no, that's a very good, very good point because definitely 
if this drug existed a couple of years ago when I was clinically obese, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I'd be able to resist the urge to try it. Then <laughs> on right now, because yeah, you just never know. You know, it's uh, I heard this interview with a lady, what's her name, Dr. Devra with a V Davis. She testified in front of Congress and she talks about asbestos, right? She testified about that and she says, it's kind of to what you're getting at, Ashley, where, you know, she says, you may see, you don't see any smoke and then later there's smoke. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to see the fire. And she says, unfortunately, lots of people have to suffer mm -hmm. for, for, guy, for it to be clear what happened. And then the blah, 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 blah. And she was saying, you know, Either you don't take a chance and you wait, or if you see the smoke, assume there's fire. And she gave smoking, and as an example, cigarettes. You know, there was always signs and no pun intended smoke, right? Before it became obvious something bad was going on. Uh, I think it's a it's a very difficult personal choice because everything you said made sense, everything Dr. O made sense said made sense. And I think it's case by case, you know. Right. Are you going to keel over dead from your you know, high, crazy, high blood pressure, your heart problems, your this, your that, because of your very bad lifestyle. And will you not make it? Or maybe taking this drug may get you over the, you know, it's such a difficult choice, so to speak. Because yes, if they exercise and eat healthy, everything will be wonderful. But if they're proven time and time again that they cannot or will not do that for a, var for a variety of reasons, then maybe this is the Hail Mary, so to speak, you know, to try, you know, maybe they have nothing to lose at this point in time, so to speak. Or it, it may just speed up some bad outcome, let's say, in that in that one percent Dr. O talked about, right? Um, it's uh, quite the pickle. So the, the MDLs you're talking about, like I was saying earlier, is that something, is it something all the pharmaceutical companies put money into a pool or is that, was it? That government fund I was thinking about, because I couldn't remember. So so with regard to MDLs, which is mm -hmm. multi-district litigation, mm -hmm. what ends up happening is, and it's, and it's sad to say, but if enough people start suing the same company, right. then, then an MDL is created. And that's basically where they process the case in one court. Mm -hmm. So a great example is Eshore, E-S-S-U-R-E, -E, which is still on the market. My doctor actually offered it to me um, recently. What is Eshore? So Eshore is a permanent birth control, okay. but not really permanent because you can actually take it out. And okay. so what started happening was it would migrate and perforate the uterus. And so women would have to have hysterectomies. Oh, wow. So, right. So it was like, yeah, you don't want to conceive mm -hmm. permanently, but now your uterus is messed up. So you have to get yeah. a hysterectomy anyway. So, so what was the point? And mm -hmm. then, you know, Pradaxa, Zorelto, these are all ones that, and we've all seen, seen the commercials of those, you know, lawyers that are like, Hey, you know, if you yeah. or someone you love, hmm. well, they have a certain way of marketing, but any type of um, firm, you know, like if 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 one just, you know, wanted to to find someone that can process their mm -hmm. their case, what an MDL is, is, hey, there's a lot of people like, for example, uh, Johnson and Johnson baby powder. Look at okay. how many years that that took. Right. Years. Yes. And they're like, oh, that's why all these people that are in their 50s have cervical cancer. Right. Yeah. And so it's not even so much to say that there aren't some great things that can come about of medicine, mm -hmm. but I've just seen that ugly side where yeah. people don't know and they take whatever their doctor says they yeah. can take, or they'll go to a new doctor who doesn't know their history and mm -hmm. will prescribe something that is just horrible for them. And so, like I said, I didn't even realize until I got into this particular sector that people can literally be dying from a particular drug or be getting very sick and the drug is still in the market. Um, so when I yeah, wow. talked to my doctor and I said, yeah, you do know that there's a really high chance of that, um, you know, Eshore uh, migrating and doing all this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh yeah. So they're yeah. not, so, <laughs> so medicine doesn't make money when you're healthy. And I know that Dr. O, you know, stated that, I mean, it yeah. just, just doesn't, it's not to, um, 
I, I don't even believe a lot of things are meant to cure you. It's just meant to sustain you for mm -hmm. a particular amount of time. Now, that's a good point. I remember when I was going to the labs, there was this old, old lady, a nurse, and she told me, because I've seen her on and, on and off over the years, and she said, you know, she had, had breast cancer. I was like, oh, no, sorry to hear that. And she was like, telling me a story how you can't trust the doctors. And I thought that was interesting because she'd done a regular checkup, and then she self checking and felt a lump, and she went back to the doctor, who was a lady, and the lady's like, no, you can't have a lump. We just checked you, and she's like, I have a lump. I need to see you. And she saw her, and then the doctor freaked out, made calls to get her in, to get things checked out immediately, and blah, blah, blah. Then she says that's the first problem. The next problem was, she said, the first drug or something to recommend, she went and done research, has some crazy-ass side effects. So she tell them, and I'm not going to be some guinea pig in the study, because, like she said, I don't remember the exact numbers. Like I said, 400 people were on the drug. They almost all had terrible side effects. Then they told her, oh, we're going to do, recommend, you know, lopping off the breast. She did more research. And this, they said, oh, we changed our mind. And she was like, you have to do your own research, right? And I remember my personal example at the hospital and the doctor come, or the nurse says, the doctor wants you to take an antibiotic. And I'm like, but didn't they say it's viral? She's like, yes. So I'm like, antibiotics doesn't sound going to do anything. And she said, yeah, but I thought the doctor wants you to take. I'm like, yeah, well, I want to tell the doctor. She leaves. Ten minutes later, <laughs> comes back. The doctor has changed his mind. No antibiotics. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you and know, if you yeah. hadn't said anything, the doctor wouldn't have cha changed yeah, his yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctors yeah. Don't, don't like people to be too educated, un unfortunately. So when you start throwing <laughs> things back to them. Yes. Um, and I don't have anything against doctors in that mm -hmm. way, but I've just been on both sides where I didn't know certain things mm -hmm. and just took anything. Yeah. And then once I started knowing like, well, wait, that's, that's on a recall, like right yeah. now, you know, oh. <laughs> the thing about that is that mm. physicians go to school to diagnose there pharmacists go. go to school to treat. That's right. They don't know anything about the medication. They're mm -hmm. looking in a book. The book says, yeah. we right. Give them that it was, it's not until we get the prescription and we're yeah. like, this doctor is stupid. Yeah. And then we're like, we're not filling this prescription. You know, you tell the patient to contact their doctor. Or yeah. Sometimes we contact the doctor. But yeah. um, doctors don't know about medications. Physicians yeah. don't know about medication. So mm -hmm. it's just. You raised I mean, a good point there because I remember the nurse told me, Kurt, she said, all they do when they go back to the office is they do this. She, she said, they do the same thing you can do. You go mm -hmm. online. She says, mm -hmm. you have access to like almost everything they have. It's not in their head. They got to go research <laughs> to mm -hmm. figure it out. You know, she's, yeah, because we tend to view doctors as omnipotent. Like, yes. they're all-knowing. The God complex. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, this doctor cannot make a mistake. No, yeah. they tie their shoes in the morning. They mm -hmm. breathe. They have the same blood like you. They, they can make mistakes all the time. <laughs> so, you, you yeah, there's a re thinking with this stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's a reason why the pharmacist has to check the prescription. Because yeah. they don't know, they don't know. Like they didn't go to school to yeah. learn about medication. So, yeah. and I have learned so much from a good mm. pharmacist. There is nothing like a good pharmacist that will say, "Hey, wait a minute, aren't you taking so and so?" Or, "Hey, okay. you know," yeah. which is really interesting because you would think, "Well, I know I told my doctor," <laughs> and they'll be like, "Hey, don't don't take this in the morning. Taking it, or or you know, yeah. I'm gonna call your doctor." And so, I mean, yeah, I just think. Um, educate, I mean, especially our community mm -hmm. um, and, and to the comment about um, organic, you know, call yeah. me a conspiracy theorist, but I'm to, to the point where I think at some point we're going to have to start buying seeds and planting our own food, <laughs> right? Because we don't know, like sometimes we just don't mm -hmm. know what's, what's in certain, like I just found out that certain fruits have been injected with extra sweetener. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you mean to tell me I'm feeding my kids some oversweet fruit? Like I, I don't know. I I didn't realize that that was even a thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. These things are a thing. I remember a guy at Whole Foods I met. He told me he can eat organic pineapple, but regular pineapple he breaks out. Just like me, I love cherries. Organic cherries, grapes give me no problems. The non-organic one, I'll eventually start to flake or things will flare up on my face. So, I mean, it's, it's clearly something different between the organic and non-organic one anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those Monsanto emails that were made public in the in their trial, what, probably two years ago now, 
I mean, you clearly see the emails going back and forth between the scientists saying, yeah, we're not sure. Yeah, who knows what could happen here? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, what is it? Caveat emptor, buyer beware. So, yeah, it, it suits you if you can afford it. And most people can, or since the most, a lot of people can for sure. Uh, aside from the beef and seafood, most clean, organic things, vegetables are uh -huh. not super expensive. I mean, some fruit are, but uh, by and large, you can eat healthy if you want to eat healthy. You can afford to eat healthy. Let me rephrase that. You can afford to eat That's healthy. Good. If you eat healthy. You yeah. can't. You know, That's you don't good. need the new iPhone, the new Samsung Galaxy. You don't need a gazillion subscriptions. So you yeah. can eat healthy if you so choose to. Eat. You can afford to if you so choose to. It's, it, yeah, it's a decision. <laughs> It's a decision. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. Ashley, do you have any any other, I guess, similar question to ask Dr. O, any other things that we don't know that you think would be useful to know? Um, I would just say they, so, so one thing that I hear a lot, and I have five children, so Mm -hmm. Um, thank, thank God, bless, bless God. They're all, you know, um, healthy, but we have a pediatrician and stuff like that. But I would say that I hear a lot of times doctors saying, you know, people coming in and they want to be Google doctors. Mm -hmm. Well, look, use the medical journals, peer reviewed medical journals, right? Don't yes. Web, web MD might work, but if you really want to get in the weeds, cause that's what so like we use like a nurse paralegal, right? So she's yeah. like a nurse and I am not a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. So so we use so so if you really just want to know about a drug mm -hmm. or homeopathic, I encourage everybody. Like I on child number three, I stopped doing a lot of the Tylenols and stuff and started doing um you know, like the oils yeah, um, on their oil feet. Yeah. yeah, so just kind of seeing, I mean, I would just, you know, like encourage everybody to Google some good homeopathic stuff because there are some good bloggers and moms that are really just trying stuff like elderberry and right. zinc and vitamin C, like the good old stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Things your mother time, gave you. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 right, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just don't want us to be like overly medicated, right? Where every yeah. little sniff, like, like even my mom, like every little sniff, she wants to get there. I'm like, why don't yeah. you just get, get some honey and lemon yes. and some hot water and yeah. some ginger honey. root, like yes. go to Fiesta. <laughs> I know you don't want to drive all, all the way to Fiesta, yeah. drive to Fiesta, chop up some ginger root does mm -hmm. wonders. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I just yeah. want us just um as a company, as a community and we all all could do do better because we like to do what's quick and fast because we're mm -hmm. busy and we got lives but just just try some homeopathic stuff i mean i would definitely say um if you can now if you can't and it isn't working mm -hmm. medication is a blessing we are a blessed um um country yes in 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 so far as having access when when we really need it i just mm -hmm. truly believe it's like you know, do do your legs shake? Uh, what is it? Restless leg syndrome. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I've been doing that since since I was like five. Like, I didn't know I had, you know. <laughs> so we just need to like use our brains and pray hard and ask God to lead us. Hey, God, what do I really need and what do I not need? I mean, that would be the only thing. No, that's that's a very good point. Yeah, you got to use some critical thinking, right? And, yes. Uh, yeah, honey. I forget what the numbers was. Like some like in some cases, thirty percent more effective than cold medicine. But pharmaceuticals <laughs> yes. make money off of honey, right? Yes, so, raw good you honey. You can't patent honey, right? right. Exactly, exactly. That's right. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Now you're talking my language. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you but, um, so I agree you know. with everything that you said. Um, mm -hmm. All medications have side effects. Um, I cringe sometimes, especially when when pregnant women are taking medications. Oh yeah, I cringe. There's a lot of you know. Sometimes you know there's no way out of it, but like mm -hmm. you said, when the restless leg syndrome comes on the commercial, I'm just I'm cringing. 
Um, some things are, many things are unnecessary. Yeah. I say, if you can go without taking a medication, don't. Because all of these medications cause side effects. And now you're on a new medication to control the side effects from the first medication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's a common yeah. thing. Yeah, because tying it back to uh, the original point regarding this weight loss drug, which is better than the other ones, you know, uh, whether it's effectiveness or less side effects, but for sure effectiveness. The common theme is you don't want to be on anything too long, right? You, right? The goal is to be temporarily on it. And I've met some good doctors which tell you, yeah, I'm giving you this for a while, but yeah, most people... I remember hearing this psychologist or maybe a psychiatrist, I can't remember which. She said something along the lines, the pain of the change needs to be less than the pain they're going through currently. Mm -hmm. because if the pain, so if I can take a pill and not work out, then I'm going to take the pill, basically. Because it's easy to take the pill. as long. As, but if the pill has terrible side effects, then I might work out instead to change what I'm going. You know, But we tend yeah. to do at the least resistance. Um, that's the it's just human nature. Human beings are innately lazy, for lack of a better word. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have to force yourself to view this drug as a temporary thing. You know, at, at least the, the the way they did the study, I know they gave people advice on you know eating better, being more active, etc. So hopefully that's something that continues, but. Yeah, I'm assuming that most people get the prescription. They're, I mean, maybe they get a pamphlet, but again, they're probably not really doing anything with it. Like that lady I saw the video of, you know, she said, I lost all this weight, but I didn't exercise. So who knows if she's going to do a, I noticed she didn't do a video, a follow-up video saying, hey, it's five months later and things are easy. <laughs> and that's what I usually see on these videos, the, the before and after, <laughs> and then there's no after the after. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's always a before and after video, and you never see another one. Not unless they're faking it where they go lose again or some nonsense like that. And is it addictive? You know, that's what I always wonder. Because sometimes well, you get, it's very you know, unlikely for this medication to be addictive. Not physically addictive, but could it be psychologically addictive? Or chemically addictive at such dose. I don't know. I'm just yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. The reason I say psychologically. I know some people who do take steroids, they become addicted to them because they look superhuman. They look, they have Greek Adonis bodies. They look like goddesses, you know, if they're women or what have you. And when they come off that stuff, they come back down to more mortal levels. <laughs> and that's it's why they go euphoria. right back on. Exactly. You know, they look, because you have to imagine looking so, so, so the best that you can possibly look or beyond your best, let's say, right? Imagine that, physique and you get it for a while and it goes away but you know if you take this thing that's bad for you you can get it again and there's a strong likelihood you're gonna get it go get it again yeah there's a famous study where they asked some olympic at least or a lot of them if you take a drug that would guarantee you a gold medal but you would die within x years would you take it and it was a large percent of them said yes so again <laughs> human beings are kind of strange <laughs> that's true that way, that way right because you know, if you smoke today, but you're going to die 30 years from now, that's why people smoke today. The consequences are down the road. So, yeah. But this has been a fascinating discussion. Um, hey, we actually almost got to two hours. Let's see. Do we have anybody else wants to join or do we have any new comments? If not, I'm going to call it a night. I, I would, I would still opinion. definitely give this drug a chance, but like you said, like you know, like I said earlier, my goal would be to get off really fast. Yes, I agree. Yeah, if you use it as a Kickstarter, then I mean, that's what I would use it as, to be honest. Because one of the reasons it's three things people quit, I think. And for me, it's the same thing for me. I said ignorance, arrogance, and lack of results. I was ignorant, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know what I didn't know. Some of the things I thought I knew were just purely incorrect until I got professional coaching. Arrogance, oh, I'm smart. I can Google it and figure it out. That didn't work either. And then the lack of results. You bust your ass in the gym, you starve with some diet, and the results don't come quickly enough or not. they're not sustainable. So you get fed up and quit. A drug like this could keep you going for a, a period of time for you to get over that hump 
till you make a lifestyle change. It's like brushing your teeth. You just do it automatically. So if you can go to the gym automatically or eat healthy automatically, or you're not even the gym, you're just more active. You walk more or whatever. You play with your kids. You go play tennis, basketball, what have you. If you can change that, then that's another reason I think this drug could be helpful, you know, to make that mental shift to a lifestyle change to become healthier. Then I think it's a great, a great thing to do, you know. That'd be my final words, because you both make great points. So I like the use it as little as you need to use it <laughs> type style. So anything you ladies on the panel want to say? Final thoughts? No, just blessings to everybody. And, you know, stay positive. Love y'all. Yes, I agree. It was a great discussion. Very educational for me. So hopefully, well, people have said they learned a lot too, but yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime. Please come on the next show. Yeah, I don't know how I even ended up. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I we have a very, ex a very exciting show <laughs> next week with a gentleman who used to massage me when he was here in Florida. He worked with like the Cincinnati Bengals before. And he went back to Ohio to oversee this NFL prep training camp. And I reached out to him and said this interesting idea, massage therapy helping fat loss and muscle gain. And most people don't know, similar to what you guys were talking about earlier and Tammy, most people don't know if you see a really good massage therapist, the, the amazing things they can do for your body. They've done them for me. I'm not, it's hard to find these people. It's hard to Google them. It's usually word them out. They move in the same circles. Like some of the circles I move in with some of these coaches, et cetera, et cetera. And like there was a guy I was seeing, he worked on Roger Federer, but he charged me $80. So that's Roger Federer, the tennis player, the guy that's worth a couple hundred million dollars. I'm sure Roger Federer paid him a ton of money to work on him, but he charged me $80. So these people exist and they can do amazing things on your body, which then can help you perform like a superhuman in the gym. And again, back to the results, you can then see the results, right? I'm deadlifting over 400 pounds. I'm in my 40s and I'm not on steroids. So they, they can do amazing things with your body, right? Which can then get you over the hump so you keep going. It's, you know, like I said, quite amazing, quite amazing. I can touch the ground bending over. Couldn't do that until I was like, what, 10 years old? It's been so long. <laughs> but, you know, they work on you for an hour, two hours, couple sessions. And wow, you can just do things you haven't done since you were a child, essentially. So that's going to be the, one of the shows next week. So I think that applies to anybody, male or female or what have you. But it's, I'm taking it from the angle how it can help you to lose weight or gain muscle indirectly. But it definitely works. So if you hit the subscribe button, you will definitely be notified of this. So hit that subscribe button. Definitely hit the subscribe button. And click the little the bell. I recently found that out myself. Because if you don't click the bell, then you don't get all notified. <laughs> Yeah, it's a subtle thing. You have to click subscribe and the stupid bell and then click all. <laughs> didn't realize that myself because I was wondering why. Now I know why some shows I'm notified and other shows I'm not notified. So, yeah. All right. So, later is my massive megalong now. For those of you that don't speak Jamaican Patwa, that is goodbye, my people. So, have a wonderful night. <laughs> Good night. Blessings, everybody. Yeah, man. Good later. Night. <laughs>